Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new here, uh, thanks for coming. Today we're going to be doing rear brakes and a right rear hub on my 2011 Saab 94X. All right, now that we've got all the tools over here, just, you know, regular regular wrenches, sockets, whatnot, I actually ha grabbed this uh, slide hammer set for doing the uh, passenger side hub. Um, I was actually going to buy my brakes from eSob Parts, just like how I bought this nice, genuine GM AC Delco hub from eSob Parts. However, uh, I was in a rush, didn't order them in time, so I just went and grabbed these locally. Uh, the nice thing about the 94X, it shares a lot of parts with the Cadillac SRX, so if you're an SRX owner, you could also use this video for some help. Um, so, you know, I was able to get them locally, you know, nice ceramic pads, uh, the good painted rotors, so that's all good, and tools, and now we're uh, ready to go. All right, we're going to start on the driver's side wheel. Uh, let's get this jacked up, get this wheel off, and get her going. All right, we're going to start off by cracking the lug nuts. This is a uh, 22 millimeter. One, one other tip that I always give people, if you're working on something and you take a wheel off, always take the wheel, put it underneath the vehicle. That way, if for some reason this jack gives out, you still have something to support the vehicle. Now let's get in here. We'll actually take a quick look at this rotor. You can see it's got some good pitting on it. You can't see the pads right here, really. Well, you kind of can right there, but I'll pull them out and show you. This is definitely almost metal on metal. I mean, the, this 9.4 has 97,000 miles on it, so it makes a whole lot of sense. So uh, let's get to taking it apart. This is the fun part. All right, now to remove the caliper, what you're going to need is you're going to need a 14 millimeter socket. I actually have this on a half inch adapter because I'm going to be using my half inch ratchet, and this is a 3 8 and I have a uh, 18 millimeter here for removing the uh, for removing the caliper bracket. The one other thing I have is a T30 Torx. Right here, you have a hold down screw for the rotor, so that needs to get removed as well. Take off, you know, those the four bolts and the one screw, and just swap the parts out. It's pretty simple. The one thing we are going to need to do is we're going to have to compress the piston. I have done, I have another tool for that. We'll have to see what kind of pistons in this caliper. I've never done a set of brakes on a 9.4 yet. So here we go. All right. Sometimes these are a little hard to get off. That's why I have my uh, so I have the pry bar rant ready. I'm just gonna take this caliper, rest it, rest it on the uh, sway bar. It'll be perfectly fine there. As you can see, these pads are completely done. There's nothing left of them, which makes complete sense why it was grinding coming in. We'll compare the new pads and the old pads once we get this all apart. Now the question is, how lucky are we about to be? The answer is not very. You gotta get the big hammer out, give this thing a few hits, it'll come off. All right, there we go. All ready, I'll probably uh, take this, clean this up a bit with a uh, wire wheel, and uh, then we can reassemble. Only in my neighborhood do you have a skid steer driving down the road, just randomly.
All right, since I actually couldn't find my drill, we're just gonna hit this with a wire brush quick. to pull the brake fluid cap off, the reservoir cap. That way, when we compress the caliper, if there's any pressure from the caliper being compressed, you won't have an issue with that pushing back on the cap. Um, then we'll clean up the rotors, get the pads ready, and um, get this back together. All right, what we're gonna do right here, just open up, the, open up the rotor, pull it out. What you wanna do is you wanna throw a little bit of brake parts cleaner on it. What you do is you just, you know, a little spray. One thing I should probably double check before I do this though, is that this is the same rotor as the other one. So one second. Yep, exact same rotor. The only reason that you do that beforehand is because once you clean them, sometimes you can't return them. So take it, spray some, spray some brake parts cleaner on. What that's for is uh, they ship them with oil on them on the on the surfaces, just so that way you know they make sure that these don't rust before you get them. And since this one actually has a inside shoe parking brake, just get a little bit in there as well. Now most people are going to be wondering why the pads are here. What I actually do with all the pads that I put on cars, I take them, I coat them in disc brake quiet first. I've never had squeaky pads that way and it makes life a whole lot easier. to compare the thickness of the pads. This is the pad I took off. This is the pad going on. There's there's a lot more thickness to it. Obviously this stuff, you look at it, this was almost down to just metal. This pad was definitely completely done for. Hopefully the camera focused all right on that. All right, before we get back to reassembling anything, we're gonna have to compress this caliper. As you can see, it's pretty far extended. Now this isn't a special caliper, meaning it doesn't need a special tool to compress. It doesn't need, um, you know, there's tools that twist and push in at the same time, like on the 9.3 Sport today and because of how the e-brake is set up. As you can see, the e-brake on this one's just a uh, drum style, where it's the inside of the rotor. So what I'm actually going to use, you can use a regular old C-clamp for this. You can use pretty much whatever you want. I am going to take the old pad, and I actually really, really like using this brake tool. Oh, well. I'm going to have to do this with both hands, but I really like using this brake tool. What this is, is this is actually the same one that I use on my 93 Sports sedans. Let me get it over here where it's a little bit dimmer. 93 Sports sedans, I just use it with a flat front to compress it. To me, it's a little bit easier. I've seen a handful of other things. You can use a, there's a ratcheting style one. There's one that, um, one that, you know, you can just use a C-clamp, anything like that. I personally like this tool because it's, a brake tool. You, you don't need to use this though. Uh, so I'm going to uh, compress that and then install all that. Well, at least half of it. The other half goes on the other side. So uh, here we go. One thing to note, just make sure to compress this slowly just to make sure you don't push a whole lot of brake fluid out of the system very, very quickly. thing is this kit came with all the hardware so you make sure just to replace all of this hardware uh, cleaning this up would just be a pain so grab a flat blade screwdriver pry it all off put the new stuff on nice and easy all right so we're just gonna take these pry them off quick and easy new ones 
that came with the pads. screw back in caliper bracket back on just remember, this is where you use the 18 millimeter socket again. Here's the part where you put the pads back in. Always put a little bit of the ceramic brake, brake parts lubricant on it. It's the purple stuff. Put a little bit on the edge of the pads. That way you make sure nothing squeaks at all. Very, very particular about this because I've had a lot of squeaky brakes in the past. It's just something I don't like. Just a little bit goes a long way with this stuff. This is also why I'm wearing the rubber gloves right now instead of my normal gloves that I work on cars in. Just because this stuff can get a little bit messy. It's kind of like anti-seize. One little dab and all of a sudden you look like the Tin Man. And last but not least, caliper back on. I always put the set screw or the caliper screws in first finger tight, and then you tighten them down. Tighten them down with that 14 millimeter. Yeah, my friends, is how to do 9 4X brakes. I'm not going to show you the other side. What I'll do is we'll just kind of fast forward to the point where everything's taken apart and then I can show you how to take the hub off the other side. Uh, I'll probably take that one and cut that one into a second video as well, just so you can see hub removal a lot easier without having to watch this in, this entire video to see the hub removed. So uh, let me just go. Uh, I'm actually going to take this, put this wheel back on, put this side of the car back down, then go work on the other side. side since I'm going to do the hub as well I need to take off the axle nut so the way I normally do this is I'll take a big screwdriver put it in one of the you know one of the cooling ports on the rotor uh, then I'll grab uh, the correct size should be a 32 millimeter which it is then comes the fun have the breaker bar then I grab the persuader now what you want is you want about as much leverage as you can get and don't pull, push. Now this one was actually a lot easier than they normally are. It could also be because of the leverage. This one's actually a lot easier than they normally are. Normally these things give me a lot of trouble. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to flip it over to my ratcheting, my ratchet. Let's take this the rest of the ways off. But putting the screwdriver in the rotor is probably about the easiest way of getting this done. And I'm going to have to look up in a Saab WIS, or the Workshop Information System, to see what the torque is on this to put this back in. So, back to just taking the brakes apart at this point. All right, so right off the bat, you'll see one little snafu we ran into. If you look at that, both sides are turning on this. Now, fortunately, GM has put a 17 millimeter, you know, a 17 millimeter wrench spot on here, so I can grab this side, turn that side, won't have any more problems heading forward. Just remember, this is a 17 millimeter. You're going to need open end wrench to do this. Pretty easy. So here we go. Keep going.
Okay. Here is something I've never seen in all the time I've worked on cars. what the rotor looks like let's see if the camera will focus on that here's what the rotor looks like it's definitely been metal on metal ever since she brought it back grinding uh and i mean here the back of it's just a disaster too this one makes the other side look real good so this is just crazy 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 all right now that we've gotten past Probably the scariest automotive thing I've seen in my life on one of my own cars. I'm going to remove the hub next. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and see if I can sneak it out around the brake shoes for the, for the parking brake. I really don't want to take that apart if I don't have to. So we're going to give it a shot. Um, my guess is it'll end up having to come out. But if we can sneak around and don't have to, it's all the better for us. So the, uh, these three bolts, 18 millimeter in the back not hard to get at and then we uh get to have a little bit of fun with the slide hammer so here we go all right so one quick thing i noticed a couple turns in is that i'm going to need an extension for one and a ratcheting wrench or an open end for the other so here we go Finally got that last bolt out. That is just in a really, really difficult spot. So, alright. It's actually not quite all the way out yet. There we go. There. Alright. Now for the question of, can I actually pull the hub with this or not? Um, if you noticed before, I was trying to force the axle out of the hub. It didn't want to come out. So what I'm going to do is, I learned this trick a while back. I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the puller, I'm going to tighten it down all the way. Then I'm going to thread the slide hammer onto the, onto the face hugger here. And when I, when, I, when I thread it on, sometimes you're able to actually take it and push the axle out like that. So we're going to give that a shot, see if it works. Uh, hopefully it does, because that makes it a whole lot easier. Um, I don't want to have to try, I don't want to have to try and pull the, uh, pull the hub with the axle still stuck in it. Uh, if this doesn't work, I'll probably put a little bit of croil in it and then wait a little bit. I don't want to heat this up because this is still a good axle. All right, it's definitely let go now. I looked behind, I could see the axle popping back, forward and backwards, so here goes nothing. Okay, so the elapsed time since the last time I was recording is probably about an hour and a half. Um, the hub assembly hasn't come off. What I've done is I've taken the old rotor, I've bolted it on backwards. I was watching a YouTube video where a guy had this thing called like the hub buddy or something like that. Literally what he did was he bolted it on, hit it with a sledgehammer. I saw that and I thought, what if I took the rotor, bolted it on backwards and hit it with a sledgehammer? Maybe it'll come loose. 
I've literally been beating this thing with the with the uh, slide hammer for probably at least an hour and a half. I did take a little bit of a break in there, so maybe an hour. But um, I mean, <clears throat> here goes nothing, I guess. Worst comes to worst, it don't break, or I hit the nine four. So hopefully that don't happen. Whoever that guy was on YouTube that made that video is genius. It actually looks like it took the parking brake and everything with it, which according to Wiss, I actually checked, the parking brake and whatnot is supposed to be left in, um, but it looks like it's stuck to the wheel bearing at this point, so... I'll figure that out. Honestly, I'm just happy that the wheel bearing is out at this point because this has just been a mess. Oh yeah, that's still The other interesting thing is that the axle is stuck, which I was able to push it in before with the slide hammer. Unfortunately, this is coming a little bit more, becoming a little bit more unorthodox than I'd expected. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to remove the parking brake cable, which, from what I was reading in the workshop manual, you actually have to reprogram when it's removed. Hopefully, you only have to reprogram it if it's replaced. Uh, we're going to find that out. Fortunately, I do have the ability to reprogram it because I have an MDI. But I really, really, really didn't want to do that. Just because I don't know the process 100%. I'm not sure if there's other adjustments that need to be made or whatnot. And I mean, this is real simple. It's just a cable in a holder. So let's hope that I can pop that out. and there won't be any ramifications. Right. So now I've removed the hub assembly with the backing portion. Uh, the problem was that it was having problems with the ABS sensor. I can completely tell why, because none of it's left. Just pretty self-explanatory why that wouldn't be reading right. But now I have to get this backing portion removed from this hub. So this is going to get interesting. Okay. That was a little easier than I expected. Perfect. So I'm going to just take this with the brush, clean it up, get the new hub, put this all back together. Got that all cleaned up. Now time for one brand new AC Delco hub from esobparts.com. I realized that I grabbed one of the caliper bolts instead. Um, that happens sometimes. Uh, that's why I normally actually keep them sorted, but 
Uh, this time around I didn't. Yeah, that happens. You also notice I took my gloves off. Makes it a whole lot easier when you take your gloves off to feel bolts. I just do that normally when I'm trying to get into like a small space. So, uh, yeah, maybe I can get this uh, bottom bolt finally. is the bottom one, and that's why this is going as slow as molasses. Uh, I'm sure I've sped this video up a bit to this point, so it doesn't look like it's taking forever, but it is. All right, now in WIS, it actually gives a torque spec for this. 92 foot, it's 92 foot pounds on the three bolts in the back, and it's 184 foot pounds on the axle bolt. Now the only one that I'm actually going to torque to spec is going to be the axle bolt. Unfortunately, I can't even, I can hardly get a wrench in the three in the back, so I'm definitely not going to be uh, torquing them to spec. You just get these tightened the rest of the way up, make sure they're uh, to German spec as we say in this garage, which is uh, good and tight. And then we'll finish up by Finish up by putting the brakes back together and then torquing her down. All right, folks, at this point, you're probably wondering a couple things. First off, why am I at the front of the 9.4? Second, why is it dark outside? So, the camera died while I was working on it, and then I got extremely frustrated because I was having an issue with the uh, with the parking brake, which this has a drum style parking brake. I got hangry. My wife showed up at home. Fortunately, Christy's my savior today on this, um, and she was like, "Hey, we need to eat dinner," which was a great thing. Went up, had some, went up to the house, had some dinner, came back, realized that when I'd taken the whole unit apart the adjuster had gotten knocked out of place. I was able to readjust that, put the, put the brakes back together, no problem, torque down the axle, put the pads and everything in. I'm going to keep an eye on that, on that side mainly because the, the pads fit a bit tight into the bracket. So what I might end up doing, I'm, I, I might end up buying a new caliper. That's slightly high on my list to be 100% honest. I'll probably buy a new bracket j just because with that, with that pad being missing, the I found that the back pad was stuck pretty well in there. So, you know, it makes me wonder, did it just, you know, that back pad, did it just jam? And then it just pulled that front pad down. I just don't understand why it didn't make any noise. It didn't grind or anything, except until like three to 500 miles ago. That's when it started making some noise back there. And on these things, normally they make a little bit of noise and then you replace them. And there's normally quite a bit of pad left still. And it's not a big deal. And for, for some reason, this one was all the way down. Now, you're also probably wondering, why did I do the hub? Well, this has been throwing an ABS and traction control code for a while now. With that came a service rear axle light, or a rear axle failure light. I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's the light you don't want. Um, I pulled the code. It said that there was an issue with the pump and it was slipping. So I went and I replaced the pump in the rear axle, which is 350 ish dollars. Um, it didn't solve anything. So then um, Matt from Esab Parts came over one day. We went through, we did the cross-wheel drive service where you drain, drain the rear axle, change, you know, change the filter, flush the fluid in the transfer case, we did all of that, and it still didn't fix it. And then you know, Matt and I were talking after we pulled the codes with the MBI. And, you know, he was kind of like, well, the hub is, a re is the right rear. Um, I wonder if the hub has to do with it thinking the wheel is slipping. And it's not. And it's throwing a rear axle code. So, you know, that's part of why I replaced it. Um, I'm actually about to take this for a drive and we're going to find out. So, so the theory that a rear hub could possibly fix my service rear axle light was completely wrong. Um... But the good news is the ABS and traction control lights aren't on anymore, 
And after new brakes in that hub, this thing drives spectacular, except for cross-wheel drive, which I guess I'll have to figure out another time. So accomplished a lot today. 9.4 is a lot better. Have a good evening or morning or afternoon, I guess. I have no idea when you're going to be watching this. And salon, folks.